Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Andrew Robinson and I am a recovering audiophile. And if this is your first time to my channel, I would just like to say welcome. You have come to the place where we talk about all things hi-fi, music, art, and design. But if you're a subscriber, you already knew that. So welcome back and how are you? Today we are going to be talking about a topic that has come up recently in a couple of comment sections on a few videos that we've done. And it is this notion of trickle-down technology in the hi-fi space. And I wanted to dive into that because I have some thoughts, I have some feelings, because honestly, I think this is a myth because in my opinion and in my experience, technology does not trickle down, it actually trickles up. Let's get into it. So like I said in the beginning, this video is inspired by your comments, two comments in particular that we have received in the last week. And the first one was on an older video uh, entitled Sound and Vision Said What? Which I will link to in the description below or you can check it out right up there. And this comment came from subscriber Alex Morgan, and he writes, I recognize this is an old video and I am late to the party, but would suggest that technology is first introduced to the higher end in most fields and then trickles down to more affordable products. If we want technology to keep moving forward, then it makes sense to keep the wealthy interested. Eventually, it scales to more budget conscious consumers. Nothing in tech today started out with the lower income consumer in mind. He then goes on to talk about Tesla and cars as an example of this, and it's a fine comment. And it, it would have been one that we would have probably just left in the comments had it not been for Raul Patel a few days later on a completely different video on our recovering audio file video that came out last week, uh, which I will also link to in the description below or right up there. Uh, he writes, I love crazy rich audiophiles. Let them spend millions. They can afford it. The tech will trickle down to us someday. Hope they enjoy their music. If you're poor, you can have as much fun on your vintage NAD with Wharfdales. Poor recordings, most available, sound terrible anyway on high-end systems. That last part of his comment, notwithstanding, because that might be its own video altogether, both of these viewers are subscribing to this notion that better technology starts in more expensive products and then kind of trickles down to us common folk. And I think this is an old idea, um, but I do think that maybe back in the 70s and 80s, higher end stuff did have the lion's share of the technology and then we kind of had to wait for it. But in a lot of ways in 2020 especially, in the last 10 years, I just don't think that this is true anymore. In fact, I think not only does the high end not give us the bleeding edge of technology, the high end is waiting to see what us common folk end up buying, then taking that information as sort of permission as far as what it is they can afford to put in their systems. For example, a lot of high end companies, I'm going to use, let's say Mark Levinson as an example, a lot of high-end companies have been making some very, very high-end products over the years. This includes, but is not limited to, say, preamp processors or two-channel preamps. And in the two-channel preamp realm, especially in high-end products, it's only just recently, in the last handful of years, have we begun to see things like integrated DACs, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capability, Ethernet ports, or any, or heaven forbid, you know, voice activation or Alexa or Google Home integration. That has been in the lo-fi space or the entry level or consumer market for years, years and years and years, but it's just now starting to become commonplace on high-end products. And the same could be said more on the home theater side of things because for years, the most highest end processors out there, whether it be pre-pros or even high-end receivers from the likes of say Lexicon or Mark Levinson, Krell, etc., all of these brands were extremely late to jump on the HDMI bandwagon. And then for a number of very, very good reasons, but nevertheless, they were late. And if they did jump on HDMI, they often jumped 
too late, i.e. they had versions of HDMI in their products that were often generations behind. And so this, this idea that if it weren't for these other products, if it weren't for Mark Levinson, if it wasn't for Krell, if it wasn't for audio research and these rich people spending money on high-end primo gear, you and I wouldn't be able to enjoy the benefits is false. And I don't, I don't say this, I don't bring this up to disparage high-end brands. I'm not trying to troll them or drag them in any way. It's just, I get kind of tired of the high-end side of the market getting all of the credit for things that honestly, they kind of sat out. They did, they just kind of sat it out. Or, or they did jump in in the beginning and then realized either through the fact that they didn't have the volume or the buying power in order to stay on the bleeding edge, tapped out. HDMI proved to be the great equalizer because high-end brands that early adopted or adopted HDMI early got in on the ground floor but didn't necessarily realize or know that HDMI was going to go through about a billion uh, versions before settling in on what it is and the, the standard that we know as of today, which if depending on when you watch this, guess what? It's going to change again. But it has, for the most part, stabilized. HDMI has. And as a result, a lot of early HDMI products became borderline paperweights because they stopped being really compatible with the new formats or new versions of HDMI. And that led a lot of high-end brands, I'm thinking of Meridian off the top of my head, to start making these kind of breakout boxes. It's like, all right, we've got, we've got the audio section of our product down pat, and well, frankly, we don't know what's gonna happen with HDMI, so we're just gonna make these dongles, these breakout boxes. And, and this gave rise to a whole bunch of kind of boutique brands like DVDO, you remember those guys? Like DVDO making these breakout boxes that would then connect to third party or high end brands. And so in a weird way, in a weird way, um, the high end market at that time, at least with relation to HDMI, was responsible for giving us some very, very kind of MacGyvered solutions. Nothing that I would even remotely call uh, sexy, designed, well thought out. It was more of an afterthought. Like they just started bolting stuff on, you know? Whereas Sony with their three, $400 receiver, it's just an elegant solution all in one. And it worked. It worked every time. And in a lot of ways, Bluetooth and wireless streaming, those are all things that come either from other markets, other industries entirely, or they were first implemented in more affordable or mid-fi gear before the high end kind of felt the need to adapt, adopt, and put them in their products. So yeah, this, this, this age old thing that we, we cause like, it's not just in hi-fi, like we go through this whole, we, we, we go through this all the time. Everywhere you turn in commerce, everywhere you turn in the market, it's always about trickle down. It's always about like, oh, you know, you give the money to this person and then they're going to hire that and it's all going to trickle down. And that's just, I don't see it. I don't see it. I mean, if you want to give credit to new technology advancing your hi-fi experience, you, there's more credit due to your iPhone or a smartphone than any high-end brand. I mean, just being honest, like your smartphone has done more to advance the audio hobby for better and for worse, depending on which side of the fence you want to fall on. But your smartphone has done more to change the hi-fi experience in trickle anywhere technology than high-end has directly influenced what it is that you're experiencing in the mid and low end side of things. I don't know. It's just, it's just this, this notion that you know, a couple, just a couple of really, really high-end products existed at one point and their DNA can be felt all the way down and finally us mortals with our hands out going, oh, thank you so much. It's like, it's, I don't think it's real. And in fact, I think it's one of the biggest myths in modern hi-fi and audiophile circles today. And if anything, if anything, the early adopters, all of us consumers, mid-fi guys, entry-level guys, 
we should be thanked because we have picked our sides. We've picked our technologies. We've picked our teams. And it's those decisions that have enabled other brands to now feel comfortable to put said technology in their stuff. But those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions on the matter. And of course, I, I create videos like this to open it up to you guys because I want to hear what you guys think. I want to know, I want to get a discussion started because I think it's time. I think it's time to shift away from these old adages that just frankly aren't true anymore. So that's it, everybody. Those are my thoughts on the trickle-down phenomenon in technology. But what do you guys think? I would love to know down in the comments below. And like I said, this video was inspired by your very comments. So please do get a conversation started because you don't know what I might turn into the very next episode. Uh, if you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And a bit of an announcement. We are starting a members only section on this channel. And the first thing that we have created for that section is a two hour podcast with Christy and I. So you're gonna wanna go over and check that out. And we hope to have a lot of new fresh content for our members only section here in the coming weeks and months. But that's it for me guys, I gotta get out of here. So remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Be well, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs> Please tell me that was it. It was good. It was fine. It was, it was fine. I don't think you're going to be able to get it. I don't it. think I'm going to exactly be able to get it either. how I would love you to do it. Probably not. You said you had a question. This is why I wanted to just continue to talk talking, because you know my memory is absolutely dog and... Mm -hmm. We'll take your drink. I'm not going to be able to remember. You said, you, you asked me if there was not one example of trickle down. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. My main, my comment was, or question was, is it really that there are no examples of high end trickling down? Or is it just that so much time has passed and technology like everything's good now, so therefore everything, you can find aspects of everything in, any, in anything. Well, I, I think outside of hi-fi, there's plenty of examples where stuff has sort of trickled down. Um, like my friend Ray always said, you know, given enough time, everything becomes affordable. But a lot of the stuff that's find in, found in hi-fi components nowadays is you is ubiquitous with the entry level or with mid fi and it was just through volume that the prices came down likely even more or global economies uh, you know global economies allowing for prices to come down even more if anything maybe offshore manufacturing helped to make technology more within reach of entry level and budget components more than came down from on high. Everything is such this amalgamation of so many things that it's just I it's just not reasonable to to point to high end brands or things that cost tens of thousands of dollars and go, that's why. I mean Emotiva, great example. Emotiva had I mean, their whole business model is entry level. Their whole business model is about high five for the everyman. If it wasn't for products like the UMC 200, which was a $500 processor, they would have never had the cheese to finance the development of, say, an XMC1, which was such, for them at that time, such an expensive product. They needed all of the affordable sales to fuel the multi multi million dollar development all right it's getting warm it's 100 degrees outside and i'm wearing a jacket because <clears throat> it gotta look gonna look cool all right you hipster yeah hipster douche <laughs> <clears throat> all right here we go oh, god damn it okay all right you're making this way too complicated all right so we're you like podcasts <laughs> we're just gonna we did one <laughs> We did one. It's in the members section. 
you're gonna want to check it out. New, it's just another opportunity for you to get your balls, get balls, balls deep. Get balls deep in this high fashion. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right. <laughs> you gotta let her calm down. She just made a funny. I'm hilarious.